to Oven Mitts with No Tips. Now today we are making a chilli. Now everyone will make their own version of a chilli. I am showing you how I do it. Um, I don't like them very spicy so you can kind of pimp it up or down with the amount of spices that you want and I also don't put garlic in it. The reason being is I think sometimes garlic can overpower a dish and it can take away the actual flavours of, of what you're eating so it's more garlicky and no, no taste. So I tend to leave garlic out of a lot of food and that's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to show you how what I do and how I make it. It's a very healthy um, chilli as well. So if you're on any sort of healthy eating plan, you can quite easily adapt this for you. So first things first, I always use fry light when I'm cooking. Give it a big squirt. I'm just getting used to my new oven. I'm, quite sure, I'm not quite there yet how um, how to use it properly. Then get in the hot, get in the room. It's got some sort of thermo something and I don't know. Anyway, I also cheat because I don't want to be stood there for ten minutes chopping onions and they're already done for you. Frozen onions. Chuck a few of them in the pan. Again, you can kind of put as many or as, a few or as many as to suit your taste. I just put roughly about an onion's worth, maybe just a little bit less. So we'll just sweat those down. Again, I do mine so until they're quite brown, not just translucent, because I'm not a massive onion fan. So I tend to do it so when they're actually quite brown rather than uh, translucent. If they're translucent, I think you can still kind of taste them. I'm not overly struck. I'll eat them like this, that's it. So again, if you've got kids and they don't eat onions, try just browning them off a little bit more and then just turn them the part of the mince. They'll believe anything. So if you can see that, they're quite browned off. Into that we have the mince. So I always use a big pack of mince, 750 gram pack of mince. And it just means that we can have it for the following day for, for lunches and stuff. Now there's also a also cube that going. Now I don't know if anyone knew this. Just uh, break that up a little bit. If you notice that they're not so cute, you notice that they've got little wings, okay? Some people know this, some people don't. I only found out about a year or so ago. If you pull them out, the reason why they're there is once you've got it to that kind of state, you crumble it. You crumble the octo cube gently while it's in the pack. And then all you do is open it and spray it onto your food. That way you don't get it all over your fingers. Although if you're anything like me, it's nice to get these uh, the oxo stuff on your fingers because then you can lick it off. Not a little bit of oxo. It sounds I know it sounds all sound kind of wrong. I don't mean it to be. Then you just open it up, sprinkle it in. Magic. We'll give that a brown off as well. I always put an oxo cube in at that point. Just so as, as it's brown in the mince, it can kind of absorb itself into the mince and really bring out the beefy flavour. And once that's just about browned off, you can add in your spices. So I add two teaspoons of ground cumin. I can tell I add about three because the recipe that I use says to use 500 grams of mince and I use more so I add about three teaspoons of cumin. About a teaspoon and a half of ground cinnamon. And the chilli is to your taste. So again I don't have it overly hot so I'll probably put about a teaspoon of mild chilli in. 
you do like it with a bit of kick, I suggest you use cayenne pepper. But again, use it sparingly. Use like about a quarter to a half a teaspoon to start with. Taste it, and if it still needs more, then add more. Don't go full in with one or two teaspoons of cayenne unless you do like it really, really hot. Made that mistake once before, never again. Once that's all mixed in, your mince is all nice and brown. At this point, you add in your tomatoes, which I will tell you about in a minute. So these, I use my, I make my own tomato sauce as well, which I will do a video on it at some point. I can't say it's mine. I have borrowed, I pilfered it from a TV chef, shall we say? So all that goes in. There's a brown about equivalent to about a tin of tomatoes. You can use tin tomatoes if you want, or passata. I tend to use this. Now the reason I use this is because it's made with seven vegetables. Now, I don't eat vegetables, I eat peas and carrots. That's pretty much it. But this, um, I do eat. Because it's in food, it's tasting the flavours of all the food that it's in, you can't really taste the vegetables. Now in it, as I will make some, but in it's this courgette, celery, peppers, carrots, butternut squash, onions, and leeks. And then you put four tins of uh, plum tomatoes in. Mush it all together. I, I will do a video on that at some point. Um, but then once it's all done, you just blend it down into a, a fine, a smooth, smooth um, sauce. Freeze it. Every time you want to do something that's tomato-based, like a chilli or curry, excuse me, or whatever, you just pull it out of the freezer, defrost it, off you go. And again, that's another one where if your kids don't like vegetables, make this, just tell them it's tomato sauce, they'll eat it, it'll be none the wiser. It's a good way of getting tomato vegetables in your kids. So that's that in there. You can see that in there. Now it's looking quite like a chilli. Quite nice. Uh, what you can put in here as well if you want is you can chop some peppers up and add them into it. I used to, but I don't tend to do that anymore because I'm not overly struck. The thing is in this house, if I don't like it, it doesn't go in. So I do tweak quite a few recipes to how I eat them. If you don't like it, it's tough. So the last thing I will be putting in is a tin of kidney beans in chilli sauce. It's not really hot, it doesn't really add much in, in the way of heat to the dish, uh, but it does add obviously kidney beans because kidney beans are going chilli. So you pop that in, give it a stir and leave it to simmer for about 15-20 minutes. And it really is as easy as that. It's quite a tasty hearty chilli for all the family to enjoy. And if you want to be really indulgent, you can um, pop a little square of dark chocolate into it at this point, let it melt down into it. And it just makes it a little bit more, i say, a little bit more indulgent, but a little more of a richer flavour. So I'll just turn that down, leave that to simmer for a little while. While that's on, I have also got 250 grams of rice in my pot. So I'll add, add to that about 320 grams of boiling water. Doesn't it have to be an exact science. Now I use my Ninja for this. I pop it in, put the steam lid on. Put it onto um, pressure high for six minutes. Off it goes, and that makes will bring the rice out nice and fluffy, all cooked. I've always, since having the pressure cookers, I've got a sage pressure cooker as well. I use that to cook rice in, and I use it to cook rice in. It's way better than doing it in the pan. It doesn't stick to the pan and it cooks it 
pretty much to, to perfection. So we'll check back in with these in about 15, 20 minutes and see how it looks. That's the chilli done. And the rice. Time to dish it up. So here's the rice, if you can see that. Perfectly cooked. Let's get this dished up. I am starting. lovely and fluffy if you can see that oh, nice and fluffy so I always cook plenty so there's, there's more than enough for uh, tomorrow's lunch and there we go and here we have the chilli thickened up nicely that's essentially all you're leaving on the hob for, just to thicken up a little bit. So we'll get this dished up. You can see that. Lovely. Very nice. I say just because I don't put garlic in it doesn't mean that you can't. If you like a bit of garlic, then, you know, the thing is with cooking, it's all about just a bit of experimenting and, and putting flavours in that you like. Because we're not all the same. You know, we don't all eat the same stuff. Unless you're in my house. If I don't like you, don't eat it. So there we go. Easy, simple, healthy chili con carne. So if you like what you've seen, don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and uh, keep watching out for more lovely recipes, whether it's baking or cooking, coming from the kitchen in oven mitts without no tits. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.